This is the tasteless tongue experiment. Now, tasteless tongue experiment, you're gonna to need to get a selection of foods. And these are the ones I suggest you use in front of me. So you want to get a carrot, a turnip, a pear, potato, and apple. Now, none of these are cooked. They're all just raw, fresh fruit and veg. What I then want you to do, or get someone to do if you can't do it, is grate some of each one up into a little bowl as you can see here. So I've just grated each one up, a little bit of each in the bowl, and I've got a spoon for each. Then you need to find a friend to do this experiment with. I don't want you to tell your friend the foods you're using. This is part of the experiment. So what you do, you sit your friend down, you get them blindfolded, now you can ask someone to put their stand behind them. If you've got another friend you can get hold of, so they can just blindfold them or put something around their eyes. You then ask your friend if they can pinch their own nose, nice and firmly, as firmly as they can, without hurting themselves, of course, but nice and firmly so that they can't sniff anything through their nose, because they've got to pinch it really firmly. And what they've got to stay like that all the time, and they've got to be blindfolded at the same time through the whole experiment. So, they're sat down. Now, before you do anything else, what I want you to do is use some nice clean water. Remember, it's got to be fresh clean water out the tap, no touching from you. And just pour a little bit of water into each one. And using your spoon, just mix it around. Okay, just mix it around, just to make the grated food just a bit wet. And I'll tell you why that is in a while. So make it a bit wet. And do the same thing with each one. So pour a little bit in, Mix it around, make it a bit wet, then that one, that one, and that one. So do it with each one, okay? Then, remember, you're not supposed to tell your friend the food you're giving them. You just tell them, I'm gonna put a piece of food in your mouth, and without looking, or taking your finger off your nose, I want you to put it in your mouth, move it around, chew it a bit if they want to, taste it with their tongue, and tell them when they're happy with what they think it is, ask them to spit it out onto a plate, and they can tell you what they think it is. Then what I want you to do is give them a little sip of water from a glass, ask them to swill it around, and actually they do need to spit that out, so maybe have a little bowl or something to spit into, and do the same thing with the next bit of food. Put it in their mouth, ask them to spit it out, swill their mouth out, and try to give them another one, until they've used all five things, and see what happens. So, what did you notice? Well, most people, and it does depend, it will change a bit, but most people will not get all of these correct. They will sometimes say they've got potato, for example, when actually they've got carrot in their mouth. Or they might say they've got potato when they've got apple in their mouth, or a mixture of any of the others. Very rarely do people get them all right, which is really fascinating. If you manage to do this with different age ranges, for example, you did it with a child or an adult, you're gonna find there's even a difference there. So, what's going on? How come you can't tell the difference between these things very easily? This is fascinating stuff. It turns out that often in ordinary language, you mix words up. When we say we have something to drink or eat, we talk about its flavor. But the word flavour actually is a word which means smelling and tasting at the same time. And so often we say, oh, that tastes lovely or it tastes horrid. That's actually not strictly the word we should be using. We should actually say that the flavour of that is lovely or the flavour of that is horrid. Because taste is just what your tongue does. And remember, flavour is a mixture of the two together. Now, some foods, like these here in front of us now, your tongue doesn't tell the difference between these very easily at all. Your tongue actually isn't as sensitive as you think. It can only, for example, tell really only about four different things it can judge. So it can tell you when you've got something sour, bitter, salty, and sweet. And it's got thousands of little taste buds all over your tongue. And for example, all the sweet taste buds are mostly right there on the tip of your tongue. When you put these in your mouth then, with a pinched nose and a closed eyes, all you know is you can sense a crunchy substance on your tongue. Do you remember I asked you to put water on each? The reason for that is because I wanted to make sure each one was about as wet as everything else, so that as far as your tongue was concerned, they all felt about the same. That was another way of fooling 
your friend who you did this on what was going on. So, when you put one of these pieces of food in someone's mouth, they can taste the chemicals and the substances in each of those food, no problem. But remember, their taste so the senses aren't very good at telling the difference between these foods. Gases are being given off, and normally, if they didn't have their noses pinched, those gases would be given off, and some of those gases would be going up into their nose, right through the back of their mouth, up the tube, and actually up their nose here as well. And they would be smelling them while they're eating them. And so that mixture of smells and the taste here on the tongue will give them the sense of flavour. And so normally, of course, you can tell the difference between these things. But once you have your nose pinched, you can't tell the difference anymore because you can't smell the scents which are coming off them, and your tongue just thinks it's all the same. So what about some other things you could try? Well, of course, it's pretty obvious. You could try lots of different other food types, couldn't you? I recommend, though, trying to find different foods which still are crunchy and you can make a bit wet, very similar to these foods here. And I'm sure you can think of lots of things you could try. Of course, onions are crunchy and wet. The thing about onions, of course, is they give off lots of gas. And what I recommend, if you're going to use onions, do actually make sure they're quite wet. So put plenty of water on them, mix them around, make sure they're quite wet. Because the gas that comes off these is, moves around so easily, it can get through even the tiniest gap. So even if they're pinching their nose like that, some of the gas coming off that might even be able to squeak through the teeny weeny gaps or go back up through their mouth, of course. So it's possible they'll smell that even with their noses pinched like that. So covering it up with water can help because it will keep the scent down. By the way, a couple of interesting things. When we have onions and we cut onions, it can make our eyes water. The reason that's happening, amazing stuff, is because the gas contains acid. And as that gas comes up, it hits your eyeball. And when the gas hits your eyeball, the acid starts coming on your eye. And of course, that's painful. So what your eye does, it washes it out. So you start getting tears forming, it washes it out, and that's why your eyes water. So it's good. And you don't want to stop that happening, really, because the acid is damaging your eyeball. So you want the water to flow. Some people say there's all sorts of ways of stopping that happening, but remember what I just said, if you've got the gas actually there, it's probably good to let it stay flush out. But you might be able to stop it getting there in the first place. I heard one thing, never tried it. Somebody told me that if you get a lump of bread and hold a lump of bread in your mouth while you're peeling, preparing your onions and peeling them, the gas goes up into the bread and doesn't go in your eyes. Worth a try. Another one I heard was peeling them underwater. But I can't hold my breath long enough. One other interesting thing related to this experiment is, I don't know if you've ever noticed this, but if you ever get a really bad cold and a really bunged up nose, you go around speaking like that all day, have you noticed when you eat food, it all tastes a bit boring and all a bit samey? Can't really tell the difference, it's very easy. Lots of people say this. That's for the same reason. Remember, your nose this time isn't blocked with your fingers, it's blocked with all the gunk that gets stuck in your nose when you've got a bad cold and you can't smell anything. So when you go to eat food, all your tastes can do, all your tongue can do is taste them. Your nose is all blocked up in gunk and can't smell anything. So that's why food all tastes pretty boring and a bit samey when you've got a really bad cold. Exactly the same experiment. Mm -hmm.